Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. Grab yourself a cup of tea. This is going to be a great program, but I want you to know how welcome you are here. New viewers, viewers who've been with us for a long time. Before I came down today, I was reading a, a card that was addressed to me personally. And, oh, it was so sweet from a lady that was on a fixed income, but she included an offering for the program and her remarks and everything just really warmed my heart. And I want you to know that you are loved and appreciated and you will be not you will not be sorry that you tuned in today because of my guest, the pastor and an author, Mark Biltz from Seattle, and this amazing book called Decoding the Antichrist. And if you know anything about the Bible at all, you have to realize we're living in the last days. Now, when I was a little girl, my dad was a pastor, and we sang a lot about heaven and about Jesus coming and all, and, and we thought we were in the last days. And every Christian should really believe that and think it, but boy, we are in the last days now. And the lines are being drawn very, very succinctly between the righteous and the unrighteous. And uh, I love to talk to people who have uh, really researched uh, the Antichrist and the things that are mentioned in time in the Bible. But uh, Pastor Biltz is going to give you an angle that you've never thought of before. And I'll just throw you to this. Technology, the Internet. This message of the Antichrist is going to get out and people are going to be deceived. And I'm anxious for you to meet him. And uh, I'm going to join Stephanie. This will probably really resonate with most of you, a coffee lover coffee cake. Uh, this coffee cake actually has some coffee in it. I know it sounds insane, but we'll put it together and taste it and let you know whether or not we like it. But before I join her, I want to offer you Lee Strobel. He's one of the greatest writers in Christendom today. He was an avowed atheist, but he was married to an avowed Christian. And uh, she won him over. He's very brilliant, an attorney. And uh, when he writes The Case for Easter, he's doing it from a legal mind probably a slant of Easter you've never thought about. And it's yours for any gift to homekeepers. The information is on your screen. 1-800-229-0059 for the credit card, debit cards, and the addresses on your screen if you want to write to us. Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And I'm here with Stephanie, and she uses the 800 number, and I still write the check. Right. Because I'm old. <laughs> And uh, so I know we have both kinds out there, but either way, we'll appreciate any, any gift. Don't you love a good coffee cake? This has coffee <laughs> in it. Coffee is in my top five of life, okay? It depends on what day it is. It where might it be is. number one. God's always number one. Sometimes my husband's number two. Sometimes coffee's number and two. And sometimes it depends husband's on number six. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay, okay, so. Here we oh go. Oh, my gosh. You're going to spray an eight-inch pan, okay? In the topping. We have coffee, instant coffee granules. I can't wait to taste this. I mm -hmm. just can't wait. And sugar and cinnamon. You're going to mix all that up. You're going to spray the mm -hmm. pan for me. You can get the recipe at the end of the segment. I have too many ingredients. Mm -hmm. You can um, And she always makes it. me do this over the sink so I won't slip and fall. You can send for it or you can join my fan page on Facebook and get the recipe. So I have flour. Mm -hmm. I have but Well, let me start here. I have butter and sugar I'm going to cream together. Okay. And, and I'm going to add one egg and I'm mixing vanilla. the dry ingredients yes. here. This is a really thick batter. I was really surprised. Um, oh, just the aroma of that. Uh -huh. I, need a, I need a coffee candle is what I need. Because See, that, I'm not a coffee drinker. Mm. But I feel about hot tea like she feels about coffee. Yes. So, so uh, I'm going to add an egg. Many times I mentioned my mom was born in England, so I think that's where the tea is. She thinks she's drinks. real tea is what she Yeah, thinks. I do. I wave like this. <laughs> And I'm going to add some vanilla. Actually, my grandmother looks a lot like Queen Elizabeth. Hmm. Maybe you are royal. Yeah. Maybe we should bow to you. Okay. Okay. That'd She'd be, be all right with that. <laughs> so then I'm going to mix the flour, if you want to do that for me. We have baking soda, okay. baking powder, and salt right here. You're going to, right here. You're going to put those three These in are, for me. Okay. Thank you. So I can keep mixing. Mm -hmm. And the coffee is just these instant... Um, just instant granules. Yes. 
And we also have some nuts that we've chopped up, mm -hmm. just two tablespoons, which I would probably add more nuts. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Our flame rippy, I give her one job that's off task. She messes it she up. Does. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay, I'm going to add some plain yogurt. Okay. Now that'll make it really moist because it doesn't have a lot of It does. This is it between the egg and the vanilla and the... Um, the yogurt. But it did it. bake beautifully. We haven't tasted it's it yet. It's gorgeous. I can't wait to try it. And you know I'm trying to be so good, but I'm not passing this one up for mm -hmm. a bite. Sorry. So I, ha you know, my gym membership thing ended. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I'm working out at home. Faithfully. Is she telling the truth? I do work out at home. Yeah. But. <laughs> Not as faithful. Okay, as I work every. I, I exercise every night. Every night. I'm remembering why I don't bring this up now. Well, you don't have great grandchildren. <laughs> I don't have great grandchildren, which is why I should be able to work out every night and not have a problem with it. Think what I would be like if I didn't. Okay, this is like really, really thick. So okay. I'll take the pan, and I'm gonna spray my hands. Did you? Yeah. I need this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Read my mind. And I'm going to spray my hands because I'm just going to use my hands to get this in there. Well, what kind of things did you do at the gym? <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Yeah. Oh, she got some oh, in my hair. Here you go. Oh, there we no, go. No, that was flour from what you were mixing. Yeah. Okay, spray my hands, please. That's good. Thank you. We are kind of auditioning for a show Seriously, on the Food Network. Seriously, <laughs> the blooper show, not a real show. So I'm just going to mix. I'm going to... Take half of it and put it in the pan. I did all kinds of things at the gym. They taught mm -hmm. us like everything. Did you use nice. a lot of machines? Yeah. Yeah. And I have a machine at home. Do you use it? That's what I'm saying. I try to work out on it. Yes. She tries to. I try. That's not a good answer. I try. Okay. Sugar, cinnamon, coffee granules. Yeah. So good. Half of it. And this is going to be two layers. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one up that yep. uh, we made earlier. Yep. I'm going to take the other half and put it over the top. Oh, this is still nice and warm. I made a lovely Look at that. Mess. That is a thing of beauty. Yeah. Now, I see, I might not like this because I don't like the taste of coffee. Seriously. I'm, I know. I I'm, don't understand that. I, I just know. don't I, understand and it. And you know, when we first got married, my husband was evangelist, and everywhere we go, you know, they serve coffee. I tried to like it. I couldn't. Oh, when I get up in the morning and I have my first sip of coffee, oh, it my makes soul sink. Well, that's the way I feel with my tea. It makes the world a good place. Okay, yeah. here we go. So I put the second layer on. I'm putting the second layer of yumminess on. What do you think? It's it's good. The um, the coffee doesn't. Is it's it like not a back, No, it's like a background. And then I'm it's not bad. just putting the nuts on. Mm -hmm. And then you bake it. Go. You bake it for 25 mm -hmm. to 30 minutes at 350. All right. And if you want this recipe. Information's coming up on your screen. Email's the best, but whatever way works for you, we'll get it out to you absolutely free. Uh, stay with me. You're going to meet Mark Biltz. Going to love him. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right, I am so pleased to welcome to the program Pastor Mark Biltz from a beautiful city, Seattle. Is it the most liberal state in the... <laughs> it's a, yes, the most liberal One of the, the most, most godless, yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, but uh, I guess they need you there, so I'm, I'm glad you're there. Thank you. Um, not only are you an author, but a pastor, but I understand you have 250,000 members in kind of an Internet church? Yes, globally, and then uh, in our local congregation, we're really weird too because over 30 languages are spoken in our congregation. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of Russians that we translate and South Koreans, people from all over. So uh, do you have like equipment that they can he hear it in their yes, own language? Yes, yeah. for the Russians. Uh -huh. uh, but we have a lot of uh, South Koreans who come, Hispanics who come, mm -hmm. African Americans who come. We have people from uh, Peru and Costa Rica and uh, from all over the world. Uh, and and then, then every denomination too. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Yes. yes. Um, 
I think you were good friends to a gentleman that I knew um, when my husband was alive. We brought him uh, to the Civic Auditorium here, and that's David Wilkerson. Oh, I was his next door neighbor. We played ping pong together. What you know? What what a prophet! What a, a blessing! And his ministry continues to yes. bless. Yes, it and really it, right does. on target. Yes, wasn't he? That, oh, yeah. That Definitely. book he wrote on the vision in oh, 1977. I remember, I yeah. remember yeah. that. Yeah. Very powerful. Okay. Um, you were raised Catholic, right? For 20 years, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you went into the charismatic Pentecostal? For 20 years, mm -hmm. yeah. So where are you now? <laughs> <laughs> now, for the last 20 some years, I've been looking at Christianity through a, a more of a Jewish lens mm -hmm. too, because I really believe that we're blinded in part as Christians, the Bible says. The Jews are blinded in part, obviously, too, as the Bible says. And so, but we can learn from each other. I tell people I know how to eat chicken. I can eat the meat and throw out the bones. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a matter of looking at how they learn. To me, that was the most important thing because now as a believer, I can see things that they don't see, but they see things Christians don't see. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm able to take them both and have a much clearer picture of uh, the end times and what's happening. Yeah, I mentioned in the makeup room, I said, I, I kind of think of you as a rabbi. <laughs> so, yeah, many do. <laughs> pretty good combination, actually. All right, did you, uh, you, somewhere along the line, just get a real interest in end time prophecy? Yes, well, ever since, you know, as you know, back in the 70s, that was really a big thing with Dave Wilkerson and mm -hmm. all these books. I've always been interested in end time prophecy. But I also seen where there was a lot of misunderstanding. Uh, which is what, what, in the book of Revelation alone, people don't know there are over 600 references to the Old Testament in the book of Revelation. So how in the world can you properly understand Revelation without connecting it back to all the verses mm -hmm. that John was consumed with? Because he was Jewish. Yeah, I, think, I think I have a lot of viewers who would be interested in this, and uh, we're going to put the website up on the screen so you can get this book. It's called Decoding the Antichrist. And... Um, I, uh, my audience knows I'm a great grandmother, so that that's old, okay. And I remember the uh, the various presidents we had, but I also remember all the people who named the Antichrist. Oh, of course. And uh, Mussolini was one, and Hitler was one, and um, more recent people that I'm not going to mention, uh, name them. But that's not what you do, right? Exactly. No, I'm not into uh, trying to figure out who the Antichrist is as much as profiling the Antichrist spirit, the spirit of what I call legalized lawlessness, where we think if we just legalize abortion, legalize gay marriage, legalize drugs, legalize prostitution, that makes it right. And many Christians fall for that. They believe if it's legal, it's okay, and God can't be mad at us. And that is the spirit of Antichrist. Exactly. And it's been going for 2,000 years. Even as you said that when we were talking earlier, the Apostle John said there were many Antichrists during his time. Uh, but what's scary is he said they came out from among us, from among the believers. And mm -hmm. so uh, I think it's fascinating, that as we know, he, Satan comes as a minister of righteousness, angel of light. Right. And... Um, I, w I wish I could remember it exactly, but it, it was attributed to uh, Johnny Erickson that uh, we see something that is definitely sin, uh, but then it's accepted, and then it is in the end applauded, and that is the absolute truth. Tampa has one of the big and St. Pete one of the biggest gay pride parades. Wow! And uh, you'll see the leaders of our our area down there just waving flags and shaking hands, and uh, it's huge. That is applauded today. Oh, it's amazing. It's, um, I mean, I just found out the other day, but it's been going for several years. Instead of the KJV, they now have the QJV, the Queen James Version of the Bible, and it eliminates all of the things about uh, homosexuality. Yeah, and Christians You are that. kidding no, me. No, no. You can yeah. Google Queen James Bible. I'm speechless. I'm sorry. I want to get to this sure. um, the technology uh, slant that you you give to this it, it makes so much sense I wouldn't have thought of it in a thousand years but uh, what was it that kind of crept upon you that uh, you saw a connection there yeah I when I saw the what, what China was doing they have a, a credit score where over every billions Chinese citizens are given a Chinese social credit score where if the government doesn't like uh, what they're posting online they can be denied a passport. They can be denied air 
airplanes, uh, trains, even pets. They've to and there's a current gentleman running for our presidency, Andrew Yang, and he wants to implement the Chinese social credit score here in America. And uh, when I saw, started seeing all the AI uh, technology that's taking place. Now, what does AI stand Artificial for? Artificial intelligence. Yes. Okay. And they want to put it into computers. Now, I know, Arthelene, you probably heard about these cars that are driverless, that are run by computers. Yes, yes. The problem is, now they've realized they have to give that computer a moral, morality. Because when that car is going down the road and you're the passenger in the back and all of a sudden it sees a deer run across, it has to decide, do I run across the deer and kill it or do I turn and hit the pedestrians or do I go off the edge of the cliff and kill the passenger? It has to it has know. to make a decision. It has to make those kinds of decisions. And who wants to have the moral police running your car that says building a wall on our border is immoral, but infanticide is moral? There you go. Uh, you know these Alexa things or Siri yes. things? I, I don't know what you call them. I would not have one. No, uh, Never. <laughs> and do you know what? The, the officials, I've read this, and, and the um, entrepreneurs and so forth at Silicon Valley, yes. they won't have one in their home. Well, this is why I think it's so important for your listeners to be aware of having them and their kids having them, and their kids need to get the book because do you know they're creating moral AI for Alexa and Siri? So they listen in to everything you say. Yes, and if they, the, you, they hear you say, I'm going to spank you kids if you don't go to bed. Uh -huh. They literally will call 911. You're your kidding. Siri or Alexa will call 911 and report you, and the police will come at your door because they heard you say you're going to spank your kids. You're leaving me speechless on, on many levels. You know, I watch Jeopardy all the time, and I tell my kids that I don't care what your emergency is. You do not call me while I'm walking watching Jeopardy. <laughs> so one time they put their two best guys against a computer. Right. And did you see that? And his name no. is Watson. Okay. Okay. So that you just like the regular show. And then sure. Watson won. Oh, I'm not surprised. Uh, they, they're I talking. There, I, I don't believe this. I know I'm seeing it. I know I'm hearing it, but I don't believe it. Yeah. It, it's uh, incredible. They want to implant brain chips into your brain where you can access the internet through your thoughts. If you want to know a foreign language, if you want to know the, the French word for spoon, you can think it and access the internet and then you will know the French word for spoon. And so this it is incredible, the level of technology that we have right now and what's coming. Does that exist right now? The yeah, that's what they're, yes, yes, yeah. There there's are, probably a lot. I, he I heard that, uh, <laughs> This couple had a, an Alexa, I don't know what you call them, uh, and they were talking about another couple, and that other couple got that information. Yes, yes. It'll think that you want to call them or email them, and uh -huh. they'll contact them. Uh, there was another situation where someone had a Nest camera to watch their baby in their, their little nursery room, and all of a sudden, the father hears a voice in that room. It goes in there, and someone had hacked their Nest camera and talking to the baby. Oh, man, that's, that's creepy. Yeah, that's creepy. very creepy. Okay, now, how does all this technology relate to the Antichrist? Well, I believe he's going to be able to uh, control and manipulate everybody through their technology. Uh, just like uh, we already invite uh, every, you know, all these cameras into our homes, all these listening devices are incorporated into our homes. And the whole thing with Google and Facebook as well, they're trying to develop a social behavior of every single person so they can target them marketing wise. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so they're listening. Uh, I mean, if I don't know about you, but let's say I looked up some pair of pants, like pickpocket proof pants. Well, then all of a sudden it's on every website I'm going to. I see these ads for pickpocket proof pants or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they're, they are listening listening to everything that we're saying and they're watching our behavior and so then they want to control and manipulate us and so I really believe that the Antichrist is going to be able to control and manipulate people uh, and their behavior uh, by tailoring things directly to them. And you believe uh, that the Antichrist, not just the System. spirit and the, uh, could, could be Muslim, Jew, or Christian, I, I, would say, I would say Christian very lightly, but I, I know yeah. what you mean, that, yeah. that uh, they would uh, 
say they are. Yeah. Well, see, what's interesting is that in the book I go over the Islamic view of end times. Most Christians never know what the Islamics believe. And I go through the Jewish view of end times. And what's amazing is everyone has an antichrist, so to speak. And everyone's antichrist is the other one's Messiah. So the, yeah, in Islam, their Dajjal, they believe, is the Jewish Messiah. And for the Jews, they believe their Antichrist is the Christian Messiah. And many Christians believe their Antichrist is a Muslim Messiah. So we have all and the uh, Muslims believe two Jesus returns. They believe Jesus comes back, but two Jesus. There's a fake Jesus and a real Jesus. And guess how they know the fake Jesus? He loves the Jewish people. The real Jesus oh. would never love the Jewish people. I mean, this is what goes well, on now, in it, their mind. In Islam, isn't Jesus, you know, a prophet, a good good guy, a prophet. Yeah, he's not the son of God. They right. don't believe Jesus even died on the cross. They mm -hmm. believe Judas died on the cross. Uh, really? Yes, and they believe when Jesus comes back, he forces all the Christians to convert to Islam, and he's only around for like 40 years, and then he dies. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that um, there's there's so much speculation, and, and you do not do that. Right, I, 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 I that never clear. speculate. Yeah. Uh, but so many I've heard believe he'll come out of the old Roman Empire. Uh-huh. I'm sure you've heard that too. Yeah. One thing I think we could agree on is he will be very charismatic. I, I think he's going to be much like Solomon. I think he's going to be very wealthy, very powerful, uh, very famous, have a lot of authority. Uh, and that's what's going to fool everybody. And he'll have the answer. He'll have the answer. Everyone think, blames the Jews for everything. Mm -hmm. and, but they believe that they need to solve the problem in the Middle East. If we just solve the Middle East problem, all will be well. So they're looking for a Solomon. Uh, but the one thing that Solomon was known for in his wisdom was to cut the baby in half. Well, I think the Antichrist is going to propose cutting the baby, Israel, in half. It's going to be the same pattern. And Solomon went totally against God. He was totally rebellious. Everything that God said a king was not to do, like multiply wives, marry foreign wives, multiply silver and gold, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, uh, Checklist. Mul not multiply <laughs> horses. Every single thing he did. And most people don't know. I can show you in your Bible where King Solomon was the first ch king to institute child sacrifice. He was the first one to offer his firstborn up to Molech. He's the one who instituted Molech worship in Israel. I have a whole different view of Solomon today. <laughs> uh, okay, what do we do with those beautiful Proverbs? Well, the pro well God used Balaam. Oh, uh, God right. used the donkey. Mm -hmm. Okay, God, God uses everybody. You know, he, does, he did give Solomon wisdom. He okay. used a, a lot of flawed people like me. Uh, all of us, like me as well. So he uses flawed mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But I think the problem with Solomon is he perverted his wisdom. Mm -hmm. he, his wisdom was used to build his kingdom not God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the problem comes. As a matter of fact, guess how much gold came into Solomon every year? It's mentioned in 1 Kings 666, 666 oh, talents that's... of gold. You Ooh. know, and there's, and here, you know, and wisdom is tied to that. Well, um, how do you see the, the church? Because you're, you know, you're pastor and you've been in it for 40, 40 years. Yeah. Um, how savvy are they? Do they really believe the Lord's coming back? And I remember when I was a little girl, I looked at the window and said, I wonder if Jesus is coming back tonight. I, I don't think that's much in the church anymore. That yeah, and most pastors don't teach about Revelation or end times anymore. Uh, I believe when you compare, uh, I heard you talk about uh, righteousness and how where the church is at. I believe that many of the church are like Lot. They're assimilated. They mm -hmm. no, have no clue. And then the remnant is like Abraham. They're aware. They're praying. Okay. They're trying to intercede. Mm -hmm. uh, but so I, I, I think much of the church is like Lot. I was speaking to a good friend of mine, Hatham Besmore, and I asked him one time if he thought the church was asleep. He said, no, it's in a coma. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's, uh, that's so true because so, so many messages today are on how you feel. It's like you're getting messages from culture yes. rather than from the scripture. I'd, I'd like to see a few more David Wilkerson's out here. Oh, exactly. And Leonard Ravenhill was another one of my mentors. How did you look out like that? Oh, I know. <laughs> it was incredible. But uh, to me, too many pastors want to be life coaches. They, they're oh, seeker friendly. Yeah. 
and they, they just, they're more concerned about the money and, and trying to get new people and they, they dumb everything down so people end up getting saved every week. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think people are tired of the milk and cookies. They want some meat and mm -hmm. potatoes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's why we live stream our services and people will have over 300 cities and 30 nations live streaming our service. Wow. And they can get all that information yeah. from your and website. It's all free. We, yeah. everything, the notes and the video, everything. Yeah. <laughs> In case you just joined us, because we're almost out of time, I'm talking to Pastor Mark Bills from Seattle, Washington, and he, uh, what, what, a, what a history you have, what a story. But we're talking about his book, uh, Decoding the Antichrist, and anybody who was raised in Sunday school, and this scares me too, because a lot of people kick Sunday school to the curb. Yes. Uh, I learned most of my, my Bible in Sunday school, right in that local church, and we always believed that Jesus was coming back and that certain things would happen. But don't you think that persecuted church, you know, in the other part of the world, they're looking for him. Oh, big time, big time. And, and I think that's when repentance revival comes is with persecution. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, we've been lulled to asleep completely, the church has, and we mm -hmm. need to wake up. Mm -hmm. Because everything you talk about is very real and I, th I think you've turned a whole page here on the, it's the influence of, of all this technology. Yes. That the Antichrist is sitting there waiting for. Her, exactly. Waiting for his word. And he has the millennials in his hand. The poor millennials, uh, these kids 25 to 35. Mm -hmm. That's the ones who I really want to reach with this book because they're lost. They're, they're lost. Yeah, they're lost. 90% of them don't even attend church. They think church is bad. Mm -hmm. And so that's who I really want to reach, especially as they read the things on technology. Mm -hmm. So, um, all I wouldn't ask you to give us a date or anything, my personal opinion, and that's all it is, is things are getting really bad in America. There's, a, there's, the lines are drawn. Totally. They're, they're, they're pretty plain now. But I have a feeling it's going to get a whole lot worse. How, can, how can a nation so blessed by God and trash him with you can kill a live baby yeah. After, yeah. after an attempted abortion. Uh, they've trashed his beautiful law of marriage. Yes. Uh, how, how can you do that and not pay for it? There's going to be consequences. Mm -hmm. There's, there has to be consequences. And, and I think that this is where we need to be like Abraham. Every person in every state needs to be praying for their individual state that God's judgment is mitigated. And I don't know, like with, oh, that's uh, good. with like lot 10, I don't know how many people, but if you've got enough believers in every state right now, they need to be praying that God's judgment is, is mitigated, that they could be one of those like Abraham interceding. Oh, Promise me you'll come back if you come to Florida again. Sure. I know it's a long way from Seattle because no, we are we are just about out of time, and uh, this has really flown by. But I want you to know we love you. Join me next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers.